attacking and defensive width. How do they work? Between playing wide and playing narrow, is one a lot better than the other? Because width matters. So I'm going to show you how width works using two identical teams, both with identical staff, identical players with identical stats, using identical formations, but varying very slightly in attacking and defensive widths. We're going to have a defensive team where we change what the defensive width slider is, and we're going to have an attacking team where we change each of their attacking widths for each of their tactics. These two teams are then going to go through a 40 game season playing each other and we'll come out with a winner and we'll look at the points difference between the two teams and show you for level teams what is the best tactic and are some wits a lot more overpowered than others. Okay, so this first graph I'm going to show you is going to have a points difference where you have negative and positive values. A negative points difference means the team with the attacking changes to their tactic won. So perhaps they were set as wide or they were set as narrow, that team won. Whereas a positive points difference means that the team that had the defensive tactic set to either wide or narrow won. So we started by looking at narrow defensive widths. And already this was a bit interesting for me. So if your team defends narrow, it beats both a team that is attacking wide and a team that is attacking with normal width. And by 20 points is quite a significant difference in the tests that I've run. But if you're facing a team that attacks narrow, the team that attacks narrow wins. Again, by 20 odd points. So with two even teams, I kind of thought before we started this, that perhaps if you matched your defensive width to your attacking width, you'd end up with about a zero points difference, give or take, and it'd be quite evenly matched. But actually, there's, there's something up here. So when we look at switching the defensive width to wide, we basically see a very similar result. And what this looks like is that defensive width doesn't really matter if you've got perfectly equal teams. And what you really want to be using defensive width for is playing to your individual team player strengths. So perhaps if you've got lots of good headers of the ball, you play very narrow, force them out wide, and you just win all the headers. If not, maybe you play wider and maybe you try and stop the crosses at source. But now more interesting is the attacking width. Does attacking narrow always work? Does it always win your games? So here we were playing with a 4-4-2 against a 4-4-2, the standard wide formation. So let's test whether narrow attacking formations work, no matter what the formation is that you're using. So remember, negative points means the team with the attacking tactic, so the narrow tactic, is the winning team. And here we see that 4-4-2, again 3-5-2, 4-5-1 wide, and 5-3-2 tactics. By playing narrow, you win. the very effective tactics. However, if you play 4-4-2 narrow, or 4-5-1 narrow, actually you're losing and it becomes a lot closer. And remember, both teams are playing this identical tactic each time. So with the 4-4-2 narrow and the 4-5-1 narrow, I think there's just too many players in the middle of the pitch. You've got between 8 and 10 players trying to occupy the same space of the pitch. It's probably getting a bit bogged down. However, for the rest of them, standard formations without too many people in the middle, playing narrow, attacking narrow is the way to go. So if you want to know more about the best defensive tactics to use, check out this video. Otherwise, I will catch you in a bit. Enjoy your football manager.